ion propulsion, which I first heard of in a Star Trek episode. We've turned ion propulsion from science fiction into science fact. The Dawn mission really is a journey back to the beginning of the solar system, and that's why we call it Dawn. We chose two time capsules from the beginning of the solar system, Vesta and Ceres, which are the most massive and largest bodies in the main asteroid belt. They both formed very early when the solar system was forming out of the protoplanetary disk, and yet they ended up in these two very different states. Vesta is a dry, rocky body that looks a lot like our moon, whereas Ceres had a lot of water, and it looks much more like the icy moons of the outer solar system. And it seems like what determined their eventual fate was the location where they started. And we now believe that Ceres formed much farther from the sun than it is now. When Dawn found the bright material on Ceres, what we saw was completely mind-blowing. It was made of sodium carbonate. We saw this very bright region on the surface. And then as we got closer and closer, you saw that there were multiple bright regions in this one crater. What we're seeing is an indication that there are liquid brines potentially in the subsurface, even in the present day, rising to the surface and becoming these bright spots. And that tells us that there has to be a process providing energy to drive these fluids to the surface. We call them bright spots, but actually it's a relative term. The brightest bright spot on Ceres has an albedo of around 0.5, which is about the same brightness as dirty snow. We found that there are over 300 bright spots all over the surface of Ceres, and that indicates that this is a relatively widespread process. The salts that we see in Okato Crater 